As a player, it's one thing to do it on the range. But can you do it when it counts out there, when everything is on the line? Now that's a different level. There were guys who hit the ball further than I did, even though I hit it long. There were guys who could work the ball better than I could. There were guys that had better short games than I did. And there certainly were guys who putted the ball better than I did. The fact that I was able to take them down head to head on the Lynx golf course, you have to have an amalgamation of all of it in order to compete and play at the highest level. My first recollection of an Open Championship was 86. It came on you know, extremely early for us on the West Coast, and I live out in Cali, and uh, it was just a different kind of golf. I, I thought it was really weird to see the guys bounce balls into the greens because I've never seen that before. Uh, yeah, there were guys who won who did really well, you know, obviously Seve and Nick, Norman, all those guys were, were doing well, but I, I just didn't understand it. So it was, it was fascinating to watch, but um, it was so different that I didn't really truly understand Lynx golf until I got a chance to actually go out there and play it. Once I got first chance to play it, I fell in love with it. I thought it was probably one of the hardest golf courses I've ever played, just because I happened to catch the tide at the wrong time and I basically played all 18 holes into the wind. And I, I, I couldn't believe how long this golf course was playing. And they say, oh, you can drive this hole, you can drive that hole, you can drive nine, you can drive 10, you can drive 12. I'm, I'm hitting drivers and six irons to these holes. And I, I just, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, until finally I got, a, I got a switch and I got to play some of those holes downwind. And yeah, they were drivable now. That's when I realized, you know, this golf course can present so many different ways to play it. You have to open up your mind to it. Uh, here's the young American amateur sensation, Tiger Wood. What a great talent this young man has, and what, how much we're going to hear about him over the years. I started to do that. I started to open up my mind to how the balls could bounce, how the angles I could take, holes I could cut off and kind of cheat and get a better angle down certain sides to get into flags all the holes where I just had to bail and be conservative, and especially just learning you know, how the game was so different and how they played so dramatically different. It's let Mother Nature uh, dictate it, and you have to go out there and try and figure it out. Tiger, when we spoke to you before the Open, you weren't quite sure about St Andrews. Are you enjoying the challenge of Lynx golf? I, I, I really do like it, because it gives you so many options. Um, you don't have to uh, run out the 60 degree wedge as soon as you miss the green. You, know? you, you got so many ways of playing each and every shot, which, which is great, that's what it should be. You play one type of golf here in the States where basically everything is airborne. Everything's airborne. The ground is never your friend. You're always trying to carry bunkers, carry water, place on top of shelves, make it stop, hit how high can you hit it? And then once you get it on the greens, it says, here, give me my lob wedge, give me my lob wedge, give me my lob wedge. Hack out of the rough, you know, that kind of thing. It's always the same shots. Um, you know, when you play Lynx golf, it's not. Look at the players who've done really well there. You know, Watson's won there five times. Trevino had a great run. Nicholas had a great run. You know, Jack Shorky might not have been at the highest level, but the guy thought his way around the golf course better than anybody else. And so he was able to amass a great record there. And it's just understanding how to control the ball um, in the air to be able to control it on the ground. And that's the hardest part is if I draw this ball a little bit, it's obviously gonna kick more forward. If I cut it in here, it's gonna kick a certain way. If I hit it high, it's going to do this. If I hit it even lower, will it do that? No, because there's a bank there. You land on top of the bank, it's going to go. So I got to throw the ball up. You know, all these different things that you have to think about. If you look at all those players I just named, all of them thought that way. That's what made them such great players, or why they won in a mass such a great record in the Open Championship. The iconicness of winning the, the two Opens in a row, being at Pebble Beach 
and then St. Andrews. You, you can't pick two more spectacular venues than those two, and I just happened to get them. But St. Andrews was a different level of ball striking. I hit it so much better than I did at, at Pebble. That one you're talking about? That's the one I'm talking about, Tiger. Magnificent. Nearly pitched it on the grid. My feel was so good, and I hit every putt inside 20 feet from you know, 70 yards out. Um, just the, my feel was just that good that week. Oh, it's wonderfully judged. Yeah, there's one time when I, I probably should have been in one, and it was on Sunday number 10. I had to lace a drive to get to get on the green, and I, I did. I laced it, but I didn't turn it. I hit it dead straight up the right side, and when I did, it bounced over one of the pots. Oh, oh you lucky little laddie. And so that ball should have been in, in the pot, you know, dead, pitching out sideways and trying to make par to the back pin but I just happened to get lucky enough where it bounced over and then I had some kind of 90, 100 foot putt to two putt for birdie. Well, I just focused on my game. Whatever the lead was, I was never gonna come back to them. They had to come get me. That was always my mindset. Just don't give them any opportunity for me to fall back into their laps. Oh, yes. Never a doubt, was it? Make them earn it, make them come get me. If they want to tie me or pass me, they're going to have to come get me. That's something that has served me well from junior golf all the way through to my professional ranks. I thought 97 at the Masters was something special. Uh, it's hard to explain, but St. Andrews is so different. It's just, you know, you're looking at all the, the history. The history is right around you. And you're on the fairway, and the people are behind you trying to make your way through, and people jumping in and out of the burn, um, walking up the hole knowing that I had the tournament over. I knew that I needed par in the last hole to um, break the all-time scoring record. and. Uh, I'd already dropped a shot, I got to 20, and I didn't want to drop to 18 because that's what, what Faldo finished at, and I wanted to eclipse him, so I said, okay, okay this, is, this is for the record. Um, you're going to win the tournament, um, but let's just add to it. This is making one little bonus. Let's get the record, and uh, I poured it right in there. It was that, that, no, that was fun. Peter Dawson says, you know, champion golfer of the year. To hear him say that on that green, um, that's something that, that I'll, I'll never, ever forget. And the champion golfer for the year, <laughs> Tiger Woods. My first drink was certainly, um, it was a libation that had, that made me feel happy <laughs> and a lot more relaxed. <laughs> and we had a lot of it. What, what your real, what was your number one ambition? To come out and face the competition. I love competition. Uh, the pressure. It just kind of pumps me up, and uh, I play better. Did you used to watch it on telly and think, wow, I'd love to, I'd love to be like Nicholas and Watson? I really didn't watch it that much. I mainly watched my father play. Uh, I guess he was the big hero. You know, people think my dad was the one that, uh, that was the disciplinarian in the family, being former Special Forces, um, just a tough dude, right? Uh, no, I was never afraid of Dad. Mom, I was definitely afraid of. 
Uh, she was tough, man, she was tough. Um, she was very on the numbers, by the books, the regime, discipline. You know, it was, everything was always, you know, white or black. There was nothing, nothing even remotely gray in her decision making and her approach to raising me. It was either yes or no, but there was no maybes. Dad would have some wiggle room. You can negotiate a few things here and there. Mom, once she said it, it was it. That was law. Well, I just had won the Masters and U.S. Open that year. I felt great about how I was playing. First two days, I got myself with near the lead. I don't know if I was either three or four back, but I was, I was right there in, in contention. And then we're on the range warming up. And this wall of blackness started coming at us. And no one had prepared for it. Um, some guys were taking jackets from the spectators, just paying them whatever it is, can I have your jacket? And this squall came, came through, and it just blew and blew, and it dropped and dropped and dropped. I think at one point the temperature was below freezing with the wind chill. I teed off probably right when it hit on the very first hole, and it was just like we put the umbrella away because we just couldn't hold it. The uh, wind was blowing too strong. It was just a nasty, nasty day. We've never seen him finding so many ugly spots. Oh, that was a horrid lie. Might be seeing Tiger's chance to win the Grand Slam falling away. I was more, I wasn't necessarily frustrated um, because, you know, it's, that's what can happen. That's what you have to have an open-mindedness about playing Lynx golf. Uh, you have to understand that things like this can happen. You can get on the right side of the draw on the wrong side of the draw. The round of 10 over par, 81. And I think that says just about everything. I played well, I played hard, and it just didn't work out. Okay, so on, on to the next one. Swing is starting to get better. My swing feels so much better. I'm starting to play a little bit better. I'm just very consistent. I feel like I'm making progress. I'm swinging a lot better, actually. My mechanics are starting to come together now. I'm pretty excited about the things I'm working on. I feel fine. I feel really good. Very good. I'm swinging well. It's starting to get better. It's starting to get better. I'm starting to feel a little, a little stronger, and uh, I'm starting to make some good swings again. Tiger Woods has lost that winning feeling a day he would rather I just think Tiger Woods is not playing well. He is not swinging the golf club well. Another there. bad day at the office for Tiger Woods. His chances of winning a first major in two years look slim. It's his choice. He has to live his life. He has to go do it his way. At the moment, his way just isn't working out. I felt like I, just, I, felt like I wanted to get better. And I always felt that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And so I wanted to, to take, try and take my game to the next level and be more consistent. That's all we're trying to do in golf is be more consistent. Have our bads be not so bad or have our bads be actually be good. Um, because everyone's good out there is great, and we can all hit great shots. That's easy. It's one of the bad shots. How bad is your bad? Is your bad still pretty good, or is it just off the planet? So golf course that suits my suits me. I don't know if I could actually play the golf course without the TV towers, because uh, in all my yardage books, um, it's all based on grandstands and TV towers for, for alignment. We check them as we play our practice rounds, make sure they're in the exact same spots as they were. If not, you, know, you shift your lines over. And Monty was there, and uh, all of Scotland wanted Monty to win. Um, except for that one person in his group, <laughs> being me. That was, that was actually a really good battle. I wanted to keep him, you know, away from that jug. I, f I figured, hey, I won it before, and I, I want it again. I really played well that week, not as well as I did in 2000, but it was, it was good enough.
there's only one first, you know? Especially at my age, I was the youngest one to ever do it. Um, but the second go around, it, it means a little bit differently because I know how hard it was to achieve the first time and to be able to keep that level of play up and be able to beat the guys I was able to beat. And it's sort of even to this day, it makes me feel very confident that uh, I was able to do that. So come on, the final shot. Hold the puck for us, Jack. And listen to the roar of he does. Yes, Jack! Jack finishes with a birdie. The perfect ending. And his open career is finally over. I ironically enough, not too people realize this, but um, I want Jack to come back and play and retire. Uh, because every time he's done it, I've won. Uh, he retired at Pebble Beach. I won. He retired at St. Andrews for the first time in 2000. I came back, I won. Um, he retired at the PGA in 2000 at Valhalla. I played with him, I won. He retired again at the Masters. I ended up winning that one as well. And then he retires again at St. Andrews in 05 for his second retirement, and I won that one. So I just need, for me to break his record, he just needs to come back, donate two days of competition golf, and I'll probably win the tournament and we, you know, we can say hats off. With Jax, I said, hey, it took him over 20 years to get to where he got to, um, from, I believe it was 62 to 86 and I'm in my 20th year now out here on tour. So I've got 14 and I would love to get more. So um, it's gonna take me probably some time. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, okay, you gonna make a par on the last hole? Uh -huh. Okay, all right, let's go do it. Uh, my dad, my pops was uh, not only my father, but also one of my best friends. Um, he was a, a mentor, a guider, a leader. How's that, Tiger? Boo boo. Sure was, wasn't it? He had a, he had a rule in the house that if I wanted to talk about anything, that where he, whatever he was doing, he'd stop. If it was a t watching TV, he'd turn it off, and we'd talk. And sometimes it would last four seconds. Sometimes it would last four hours. It didn't matter, and he always made sure that we were always at eye level. He was never gonna talk down to his son. And so, without that type of relationship with my dad, I don't think I would, would have ever achieved what I've been able to achieve in life. I know that was my dad's last tournament. He's never gonna watch me play. And I played, I played too hard. And on top of that, um, I, uh, I played for the wrong reasons. Playing for, for him, um, I knew it was gonna be his last time he ever gonna watch me play a golf tournament. And that was, that was hard. You know, I finished, I think I finished fourth that year and my dad and I had to talk about it before he passed, and he says, just never do that again. And I played for someone other than myself. He said, you play golf for you, and if you want to play, play. If you don't, don't. And he basically somewhat chewed me out <laughs> uh, for not, not sticking to what he had taught me. It has to come from within. It can't come from outside. People pushing to play or not to play, whatever it is. It has to come from your center, has to come from your soul for you to produce the best golf you can play. When I got to Hoylake, I felt calm. I felt like I had, I had grieved enough um, with my father's death, and I felt pretty calm. 
I've never seen anything so like yellowish brown. Um, balls made puff marks from when they landed in the fairways. And you literally could not stop the ball in the fairway. It would just roll and roll and roll and roll, especially downwind. So I implored a different strategy that week. I said, I'm just lay up short of all the bunkers. Seems happy with that and why not? Trust my iron game and more importantly, really, really trust my lag putting. My lag putting has to be on this week. I can't three putt, I can't afford to have any of those. And it worked, it really did work. The man is a superstar. Now that is box office. On Sunday it was a joke at how calm I felt. I felt so still. And then we got to 18. Tiger Woods is the 135th Open champion. And Stevie had said something to me that, uh, you know, that's, that was your pops. He kept you calm all day. And then it kind of hit me all of a sudden that he's not here anymore. I can't share this claret jug with him anymore. And I just lost it. I'm not a crier. I'm far from a crier. Uh, I probably count my hands how many times I've cried in my life. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe I was actually doing that. And you know, I was felt so embarrassed. I was doing it in a, in a, on a public stage in front of everybody. Um, I just want to get out of there and you know, go, go in a tent somewhere and, and lose it some more. But I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't imagine not being able to share a, a moment like that, um, a moment that I had trained, you know, for basically my whole life for, and I could never share it with, my, with the one person who helped me the most achieve my goals and my aspirations in the game of golf. We could never have his favorite beverage out of there anymore, um, which I ended up doing that night just to, to honor him. Um, and it was, it was tough. I mean, it was a really tough, tough night. I, 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 you'd think I would have just been celebrating all night, but I just really missed my dad. I'm gonna be 20. I'm gonna be Jen Nichols and Tom Watson. If I if it was frozen as of right now, and I would never never win another tournament, I think I've had a hell of a career. So I didn't expect to be at both of these numbers this early in my career. When I was just getting started. I still had to knock off the, the biggest, baddest dudes on the block still. And Greg was still playing, Fowler was still playing, Langer was still playing, Seve's still there, Ollie's still there. I mean, you had so many great players there. Um, I had to work my way through those guys. And so it all ended right now. And I was no longer playing the game of golf. Um, 14 and 79 are, are still pretty good numbers. At a very early age, <laughs> I used to be so fired up to, to play tournament golf that I'd sit there and bob around, just just couldn't stand still because I want to go. Let's let's go. Let's get this fight on. And you know, I want to go out there and fight this golf course and fight all these guys playing. And the longer I stood on that tee, the worse it got. On the tee, the youngest contestant ever. He's five years old. Eldrick Tiger Woods. I play that way no matter what, whether it's the first hole um, on a Thursday or it's the 72nd hole on Sunday. Whether it's the opening tee shot or a putt to get into a playoff, a putt to win a tournament, it doesn't matter. I play the same way. I play all out, 100%. There is no trying harder uh, because I'm redlined the entire time. Absolutely.